All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Uh, thanks so much for joining and good morning. My name is Jordan Lederman. I am the sales director of 160 Marina Bay, which is a beautiful new construction project that we are building right now in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, today's webinar is very important. Uh, we are going to be talking about the South Florida real estate trends for the upcoming year and also how to finance new construction financing options for buyers. Uh, to help us do so, we have the experts, the people behind financing all these buyers buying places. We have George Fragio from Vaster Capital. He's the VP of Bridge Lending. And then we have Pamela Garcia from Vaster Capital as well, the VP of Conventional Lending. So Pamela and George, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We figured, you know, everyone, the big million dollar question these days is what is going to happen with the South Florida market? We know, everybody knows how hot it is. And I figured you two would be some of the experts to tell us what the current trends are and where you see this going because you are the ones after all who help the buyers purchasing all these properties. Um, so again, thanks for joining and it's gonna be a really exciting webinar. Uh, before doing so, I do wanna give a background on 160 Marina Bay. And again, this is a brand new pre-construction project under construction right now in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen so we can get some visuals up there. So 160 Marina Bay, this is a boutique building being constructed right on one of the canals um, of Fort Lauderdale. The developers behind this project really did a ton of market research and they realized that buyers are trending away from high rises and they're coming to these boutique projects. So we have a 16 unit five story building. These were really designed to to feel like single family homes as opposed to cookie cutter condo units. A lot of people moving from out of state and a lot of people selling their single family homes to downsize. They don't like these small condo units. So that's why we built this building. We have two different models. Both are three bedrooms with three and a half baths and they're almost 3000 square feet. We also have a 14 boat slip private marina uh, in the back of our building. Fort Lauderdale is known as the Venice of Americas. There's over 175 miles of navigable waterways. It's also the yachting capital of the world. There's more registered yachts in Fort Lauderdale than anywhere else in the world. Um, so that is why we did a private marina in the back of our building. Um, again, it is known as the Venice of Americas, Fort Lauderdale, for those who aren't familiar. There's water taxis, there's uh, restaurants, art galleries, everywhere is lined up against the water, making it very convenient for boaters. There's also a booming downtown district. Las Olas, which is in the downtown portion, is about a mile from the beach. And our project is right in between. It's located right here to the heart of Fort Lauderdale Beach. Broward County is the center county in the tri-state area. You have Miami-Dade to the south and you have Palm Beach to the north. So it's a very centralized county in Fort Lauderdale is the major city in Broward. So people are choosing to move to Fort Lauderdale, even from Miami-Dade and, and Palm Beach County. And then also all throughout the state, we have a lot of out-of-state buyers from the Northeast, California, and other places as well. Our project is right on an aisle called Isle of Venice Drive. It's right off the main strip of Fort Lauderdale, which is Las Olas Boulevard. And we are 1.4 miles from the heart of Fort Lauderdale Beach. And in the other direction, we're 0.9 miles to everything in downtown Las Olas. Here are all your shopping, your retail, your art galleries, your restaurants, your bars. Um, so there's so much to do in both directions from our current location. In this map, it shows you that you're about 30 to 35 minutes to Miami. And then in the north, in the other direction to Palm Beach. We have a bright line train system, which is a high speed luxury train. It connects you from downtown Fort Lauderdale, which is the station six minutes from our project, all the way to Miami in about 28 minutes. And then in the other direction, about 28 minutes to Palm Beach. The last stop that they're building on the Bright Line, which is almost complete, will be Orlando. And that's gonna be two and a half hours from the Fort Lauderdale station direct to downtown Orlando. So again, we're very centrally located within the Tri-County area. And then within Fort Lauderdale, we are extremely centrally located. Uh, you can take your boat in the waterways and hit up all the restaurants, the bars, the things to do along the water, and you can be out to the deep sea in about 25 to 30 minutes. Um, here's a beautiful aerial shot of where our property is located, 160 Marina Bay on Isle of Venice Drive. You are facing east, which is super important. You're facing all the single family home mansions. 
Uh, this home across the canal just sold for about $20 million. So you're very, very centrally located. You're four miles from the Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Um, less than that to the cruise port, which is one of the busiest cruise ports in the world. You have a $1 billion convention center being built uh, close by as well. Elon Musk is working on his approvals with the city to connect downtown Fort Lauderdale to the beach. So there's a lot of exciting things happening in Fort Lauderdale and that's why the developers chose this site. Uh, the Kushners have a four tower project that already was approved and just a lot of future uh, developments. The city does a great job at keeping this sophisticated established city growing. Our project is very modern in design, but still has that sophisticated look that Fort Lauderdale is known for. And we have 16 units, five floors. We'll have a beautiful pool along the marina, lounge chairs, cabanas, barbecue area with a gazebo. And we are a boutique building. So one important thing for all of these out-of-state buyers, our HOA fees are extremely low. To On a monthly basis, it comes out to $12.58 per month, $1,258. That's less than 43 cents a square foot. A typical high rise is gonna cost you about 90 cents to $2 a square foot. So on a monthly basis, because we are a boutique building, the HOA fees are extremely low. For your second home buyers, it's very, very important. Uh, these units will be delivered completely turnkey. The technology going into this project is super top notch. A complete smart home, you can control your lighting, your blinds, your temperature, opening your front door, all through voice control, an app on your phone, or we're gonna have four or five touch panels going on throughout the unit. Uh, we're putting Italian porcelain floors all throughout the unit. You have huge 10 foot ceilings, wrap around windows, and this is your beautiful view facing east over the mansions of Fiesta Way. We have really deep terraces, about 10 to 11 feet in depth. Uh, the developers really wanted our residents to enjoy um, outdoor space where you can put a couch, an outside dining table and have enough room for it. Also, every terrace door leading to a terrace is double panel doors, not a one panel door, but we wanted a really nice wide opening to blend the indoor and outdoor space. Kitchens are chef inspired U-shaped kitchens, all the high end appliances. We have Wolf, Mila and Sub-Zero, two-toned Italian cabinets, um, quartz countertops and matte black finishes all throughout the unit. We're really, really proud of our designer of the building. We're putting a full-size dining room right outside the kitchen. And then outside in each dining room, we're doing a full-size wet bar with a sub-zero wine fridge, uh, the same matte black finishes all throughout the unit for that nice, sophisticated feel. In the bedrooms, we're using hand-scraped oak wood. And in the master bedroom in both different models, you have terrace access leading right to the terrace to enjoy your water views from your master bedroom. Bathrooms are spa-inspired, floating tub, uh, same matte black finishes. Uh, even our doors are Italian, uh, hidden hinge, frameless doors. Everything going into this project is super high end. In the other residence, the corner residences, we're putting the floating tub in front of the window. And our floor plans. I wanted to show you an example of one floor plan just to show you how it does give that single family home feeling. Our Amalfi residence, which is our corner unit, they're just about 2,900 square feet under AC. And how it works is you'll have a semi-private elevator that opens up into your own private vestibule. From there, you don't walk right into the family room. You walk into a foyer to greet your guests. From the foyer, then it opens up into the nice wide open concept with your kitchen, your dining room, and your huge family room. Terrace access through one point and then a second point through the dining room. And then you also have two different hallways of the unit, which gives it that house feeling. Down one hallway is the entire master suite. You have really large closets and bedroom and a massive bathroom. Down the other hallway, you have a powder room for your guests and then two really good sized bedrooms, both with their own bathrooms and closets. And I personally love how we're giving a full size laundry room with a sink, front loading washer and dryer, and more room for storage. If that's not enough storage for you, we're giving a storage unit outside in the service hallway for every single unit. So that's just an example of one of our floor plans. The center units are actually a little bit larger, but very similar in layout. And again, here's a nighttime rendering of our project, which is gonna be absolutely beautiful. Our price ranges range from about 2.3 for the corner units up to 2.5 for the penthouse. We have one left in both model penthouses. And then for the center units, 2.2 to about 2.46.
Our estimated completion date, we're completely under construction now. We should be complete by July, August of 2022. And we have a beautiful sales gallery downtown Fort Lauderdale. If you are in town, definitely stop by. You can call this number 954-939-0440 to make an appointment. If you're not in town, we've been doing a lot of Zoom presentations as well, just so all these buyers can get a feel for what the project's gonna look like. Uh, with that being said, that's 160 Marina Bay. We are cooperating with out-of-state brokers for any brokers that are attending this webinar. And with that being said, we will move to the topic of today, which are the which is the real estate trends for the future and then how to finance projects like 160 Marina Bay that are currently under construction. Uh, before I turn it over to Pamela and George, I do want to say we have a chat box and a Q&A box. If you have any questions during our webinar, feel free to type them in and we'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, with that being said, uh, George and Pamela, I'll let you take it away and tell us a little about a little bit about where you see this market going. Thank you, Jordan. Thank right. you, Jordan. Um, Jordan, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen. And like we um, decided, I think that this would be a great panel type of format where we will discuss the slides together and and discuss what's going on in in my in South Florida and what kind of trends we're going to expect uh, moving forward. So I'm going to share my screen. Sorry, I had my slide on the um, on one of the last slides too. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having trouble with it. Give me a sec. Here we go. Thanks guys for your patience. Right. So um, today leading the discussion is uh, Pamela Garcia, who's uh, been uh, in the mortgage business, I think uh, uh, longer than me, but uh, we're, we're, we're saying that it's 25 years versus 28 years, but She's an incredible um, professional that's been in various major banks and is going to give us insights into what's going on with financing. I've been uh, with uh, Fortune International for 10 years and now with Vastor Capital as her vice president of bridge lending for the past five years. And um, Vastor Capital focuses on giving you a one-stop solution for financing in reference to um, commercial, residential, condo experience, foreign national experience. And uh, we really have a great team here at Vassar. We're very proud to be working here. So what are the trends? And um, obviously we've noticed that there's a, been a big move um, in reference to uh, people from the Northeast coming to Florida. I think a lot of it started with Trump's tax laws but I think that the pandemic definitely became an accelerator of trends. And we saw that uh, major migration from New York to Florida occurred. Uh, our numbers show 33,000 during the pandemic. I think it might be even more than that. And um, we're seeing obviously people from other states as well. And we're seeing people from California, from the Midwest, et cetera. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, um, Jordan, what kind of clients is your project seeing right now? What's the demographic and, and what can you talk about that? Definitely. So we've really been seeing, um, you know, I feel like Southeast Florida was always mostly an international uh, market, which it still is, but I don't think we've seen this domestic influx of buyers in quite some time. So we've been seeing tons of buyers from the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, states like you know those high high tax uh, northeast states California would probably be a close second uh, yeah. but we even see we have one buyer from Wyoming um, which you know so we, we've really been seeing a lot of out-of-state buyers but primarily the northeast and California as well in addition to people moving from you know Miami-Dade County and just uh, local as well Correct. but yeah I totally agree with uh, those, yeah. those figures they seem appropriate Pam, yeah, there's definitely been a change. 
No, I agree with, with Jordan. There's definitely been, been a change in the demographics um, from a big four national clientele to now domestic. So yes, definitely. Uh, and I think that, you know, tech is definitely a big part of it. Um, and we're starting to see a, a major migration of companies as is mentioned here on our slides, but also just recently, Microsoft signed a 50,000 square foot lease in, in Brickell. Um, and, and you're seeing the major companies now making a move to South Florida from a tech perspective. There's a lot of interesting things going on. The mayors of both Fort Lauderdale and Miami are, are big proponents to help accommodate that migration of, of talent. So I think that the trend will continue for South Florida. Very exciting. So what's, what is, you know, in reference to the demand, obviously there's huge demand right now and there's very little supply of properties, right? And I think that here we're gonna spend a little bit of time um, kind of discussing what are the generational dynamics that are going on. Uh, we have obviously um, millennials that are coming into their own. They're becoming the, the top first time home buyer market for a lot of it. And Pam, you're starting to see this group apply for, for mortgages. Can you give me an idea of what that, you know, what the demographic looks like? What kind of profiles are, are you looking at? Again, I have seen a lot of um, domestic um, buyers in that age group as well, um, moving over here, starting, you know, to build their lives here. Um, this is the place to be. So we've seen a lot of that. I, I have seen a lot of that in that the millennials are, are definitely a big portion of our, of our clientele. And then we have at the same time, baby boomers that are now getting into retirement age. And uh, you know, that, that number that was created by our staff, 3.2 million boomers resigns from their jobs in 2020. Uh, Jordan, I think that that's kind of a, you know, interesting and why maybe your project for Lauderdale, uh, what are you seeing in reference to these retired boomers? Yeah, I would say about two of our, our buyers so far are kind of retirees um, that match that statistic right there. Um, you know, within that age range of, of the baby boomers and um, they're retired now and they want to place in Fort Lauderdale along the water with, the, with their boat in their backyard. So we've definitely been seeing that as well. Uh, George, you mentioned something also that a lot of companies are moving down to Southeast Florida. And I think that's also a, a huge thing. Um, for us at 160, you, we do have a couple of our buyers moved down here because their companies either moved to Miami. One was a hedge fund that moved to Palm Beach. Uh, they still chose Fort Lauderdale because of how central it is to both cities um, and just with that community feel. So um, the companies moving down here has also been a huge thing for uh, the real estate market, especially with tech. And I just read in the, the real deal today, another uh, Canadian um, company is, is making their regional headquarters in Brickell as well in downtown Miami. So just the more companies keep moving down here, I think it's just going to keep this market, you know, keep on railing. Yeah. And yeah. You know, once, once you have demand, you know, outpacing supply, you're going to have obviously pressures on prices. And one of the things is that people can't find the type of properties right, that, that they want. And they're, they're really uh, trying to fight for, for properties that they find and trying to outbid. So the market is, is a very interesting market. And I think that leads me to our next slide. Um, why are people looking at new construction condos as, as an option? And when you look at this, I mean, the first thing that you think about, especially for our audience from New York and, and other parts of the country, is what happened at Champlain Towers really had uh, residents around the country in reference to older buildings and buildings that maybe weren't built up to standard when they were built. And um, now people are looking at new construction as, uh, as a way to kind of mitigate the lack of, let's say, single family inventory and, you know, looking at older buildings that might have maybe better prices, but not, you know, in the future, they might have special assessments, et cetera. 
that could, you know, increase their, their risk. So Jordan, in reference to, you know, new construction condos, give me your feedback on that. So not only have, have we seen that, but also um, particularly with our project, just because of how big the units are, I would say half of our buyers were buyers that weren't ready to pull the trigger because they wanted a single family home. And they realized it is extremely difficult to get a single family home. Um, the market is still very, very competitive and there's no inventory. So then they realized our project was a better fit. But for new construction in general, you know, a lot of Southeast Florida, are, the prices are really high and you're buying an old property. Uh, even if it's a single family home or a condo unit that's been renovated, it still has the, the older bones. Um, so the good thing with new construction, and this is coming from our buyer's feedback, is they like the fact that our project will be ready in 11 months. They're getting locked in in today's prices with their contract, and they think, and so do we, that the market will keep going up, and they're closing on the unit in 11 months at today's prices uh, for something completely brand new with the newest code and the newest technology and you know the newest finishes. So that's why I do think new construction is extremely popular, popular, and we've been seeing that here as well. Yeah, we, we have obviously witnessed a, a huge new cycle. A lot of developers, uh, you know, breaking ground on a lot of different projects all over South Florida. And um, it, it is a way to kind of create inventory to like satisfy this demand that's coming from all over the country and also internationally as well. So um, I think that um, this will continue to go. We're in a good cycle here for new construction and people will see that as a viable uh, option when they're looking to move to South Florida. Our next slide is about luxury real estate, right? And um, if you think about it, most people that want to come and live in, to South Florida, you know, they, they want to live their best life. And what does that mean? They, they want to have access to water, right? Uh, during the pandemic, people realized that, um, you know, if you had a boat, you're you're going to have a good time. You're going to survive this pandemic in, in, in leisure, right? And um, I think that that's interesting because most of the waterfront property, especially single family homes, it's, it's pretty difficult to find them out there and people are rushing to build them. So I think luxury real estate sales obviously are, are going to continue to rise. The kind of clients that are coming to South Florida from the tech sector, from, from the New York market, et cetera, are well healed, you know, usually cash rich people, but some of them are financing as well. Um, I think that, you know, the supply of, of this type of property is very limited. And that's why people are looking at projects like your, yours, Jordan, where you're giving them the benefit of, of single family living, right? But in within a boutique condo environment and on the water and with the ability to put their boat on the water. So give me your feedback on that and what people are expecting when they come to South Florida luxury. Definitely. Um, you know, there's so many reasons people are moving to Southeast Florida. Um, we mentioned companies moving down here. We mentioned the taxes, but uh, one thing, probably the most important thing is the sunshine and the weather. Uh, I think the pandemic was a catalyst that made people realize besides all the other benefits like taxes, but it's the quality of life. Um, you know, you're, we have all the sunshine, weather. you don't even need to, you can wear shorts all year round. Our beaches are beautiful and you're living under the palm trees. Um, we do a lot of webinars. We partner with um, the Fort Lauderdale Strategic Alliance, which promotes basically companies and businesses moving down here. They have a quote that I always, um, I always borrow from them, but they say life less taxing. So, and that's, it's a really good quote because it means two things. Not only is, are you actually paying less taxes living in Florida, but your life is less taxing when you're living under the palm trees in the sunshine. Um, and then also projects like I see your your slide here, um, which I didn't know about the waterfront properties, but I, I, I can imagine that it's um, I mean, that's what we see here. There's only so many properties that have waterfront access. 
uh, especially with a marina in the back. So uh, for instance, most of our, we have 14 boat slips at our project and only 16 units. Um, but every single buyer that we've had so far has purchased a boat slip, even if they don't have a boat, because they know for resale purposes, whenever you go to sell your property, if there's, let's say, a thousand similar units on the market at the same time, only a hundred is go are going to have boat slips. So they're in, you know, they're in even more demand and less inventory than most properties. And there's something that's so special about having your boat in your backyard not having to drive to a marina. So waterfront properties are definitely um, a, a huge thing that uh, we've been seeing in this market. And then especially here at, at 160 Marina Bay. Pam, I wanted to ask you, if you can unmute there, um, I wanted to ask you in reference to luxury, you know, real estate needs jumbo loans, right? Right. Um, talk to me a little bit and mention a little bit about jumbo loans right now in the market. And then we'll get into the financing part of the presentation later. Well, yeah, basically, you know, being here at Bastor, we do focus on all the, um, all this information to determine what products we're going to focus on. So with the pandemic, jumbo loans did become more difficult to do. Some of the lenders completely got out of the market, um, but everything has come back to what it used to be, and we're having more lenders include their jumbo pro um, product in their lineup as well. Um, they're not where they were originally, but we're, we're getting there. As far as what type of pricing you're gonna get on a jumbo loan versus a conventional, we all know it's a little bit higher rate, depending on what lender you go with. If you go with an adjustable rate, a uh, fixed rate, you know, term fixed, Fixed for a term, but adjustable, you're going to get a lower rate versus a 30-year fixed. So it depends on the client's goal um, with the property, whether they're going to pay it off within a short-term period you. of time or they're going to keep it long term. Thank you for that. And then, um, you know, here's a quick recap of what we discussed. You know, obviously people will continue moving to Florida. I think that that trend is, is not stopping anytime soon. The demand will still continue to outpace the supply of property. Um, so that's not changing. Millennials and boomers are driving up the demand. They're both big generations that are kind of coming into the real estate market at the same time for different reasons. Um, new construction will continue to be very popular and more popular than ever in South Florida. Developers are proving that they're getting into a whole new cycle. There's a lot of building activity, you know, South Florida's bird is the crane. And, and that's, mm -hmm. we're seeing that a lot. And then obviously more luxury. And I think the, the luxury part also as well is in reference to wellness and the ability to be healthy where you live, right? And, and be exposed to nature and, and have access to the water. So I think that that's also the new luxury, right? Is to be in that kind of atmosphere. So. That's the quick re recap on the trends. Now we're going to go with Pam and we're going to get uh, uh, basically the financing options for new development condo buyers in the marketplace. George, do you mind if I add one thing to uh, your previous slide? Yeah. So, you know, th that's the million dollar question is the trend for next year. And because um, I get asked it all the time from my clients, from, from buyers looking at 160 Marina Bay. Um, is, you know, what's going to happen? This isn't a typical cycle, you know, where it goes up and down and up and down. This is completely unprecedented, uh, this market down here. And I think it was, you know, the catalyst again was COVID. Um, but, you know, and I, and I think from your last slide showing all these trends with regards to the demand and, and the companies and everything else, we all agree that we think it's going to continue in 2022. Um, but my... And, and that's the million dollar question is what's gonna to happen to this market? I get a lot of people saying, is it overinflated? Are these prices inflated? Another thing to consider is our prices in Southeast Florida, especially from the states where a lot of these buyers are coming from and cities like New York City, uh, San Diego, San Francisco, our prices are still way lower than your, the real estate in these other cities. So there is room to appreciate 
And that is what's happening. We're seeing it right before our own eyes that, that the prices are appreciating they're not overinflated because it's still way under the value of these other expensive cities. And uh, so I just wanted to add that. And that's, I think, goes towards the trend of what's coming up and how this market's going to keep going up. I totally agree. I agree. Yeah. 100%. All right, guys. So let's talk about financing. Pam, what's going on in financing and the three tiers of financing? Okay, I'm going to get into the three tiers of financing and, and give a brief explanation of what they all mean. But one of the things that I wanted to mention as you were going through your last slide and the whole supply and demand thing, there is something that we need to stress, which is borrowers need to get pre-approved. The market is hot and people need to be able to pull that trigger immediately and know the fact that you get pre-approved with time and there are so many different types of lending options for you, depending on what you need, how your taxes look, what you're, what you're reporting, everything is gonna make a difference as to what program you can fall into and the rates are gonna change and the terms are gonna change depending on all of that. So if you don't explore all of that and get all that information with time, then you're running against the clock because then you were signing a contract. Yes, you know you can qualify for the loan. Which type of loan? What are the, your terms going to be? Are you going to have to do a bridge loan because you didn't have enough time and have a higher interest rate? Or you know, did you really explore all your options? So that's one of the things that some of my buyers have, have had problems with because they don't give themselves enough time. So then they end up closing on something that isn't as great as what they could have gotten if they would have had more time, giving themselves more time to explore all the options that are out there because there's so many. So to get into the three tiers, the conventional portfolio tier, the top tier being the one that, you know, less people will fall into this box because you pretty much have to have everything fully documented. Your income taxes have to report enough income to qualify for the loan, your uh, credit score has to be at a certain score, um, you cannot have any recent, um, you know, any type of problem on your credit within the recent 24 months is going to create an issue for you in this, in this tier. Um, also, the type of property that you're purchasing, if you're getting a non-warrantable condo or a condo that does not, off that offers short-term rentals, which are big now, um, you would not be able to go under this, this section as well. So all of that matters, the type of property that you're buying, whether it's a jumbo, whether it's, you know, regular conforming loan amount, uh, that's, those are all the things you need to look at. Then if you don't, if you don't fall into this tier, you go into the next one, which would be non-QM, where we offer bank statement loans, loans that offer financing um, based on the income is determined on what the property is producing, which is called the DSCR. Um, there's loans here for non-warrantable condos, condos that offer short-term rentals. All of that can fall into this section or this tier. You go on and obviously these terms would change. They require larger down payments. Your interest rates are a little bit higher, but again, everything is getting, is aligning itself with the market because the rates in a non-QM tier in the past were much higher than what they are now. So banks are adjusting their rates and it is becoming, they're more like in the fours and the fives now as opposed to fives and the six percent area. Um, so everything is adjusting to where conventional rates are. If your conventional rate conforming and portfolio rates are in the threes, your non-QMs shouldn't be in the sevens or in the sixes. So that's that's where it's getting a little more attractive to buyers. Um, then if you don't fall into, under this um, tier, you go into the bridge or hard equity, which we also offer as well. Um, as George said, we focused on covering everything from A to Z. So, you know, any buyer that comes to us would be able to explore all the different options depending on what their specific situation is. So George, you can talk about the bridge and hard equity Sure. area because that's your expertise um yeah on bridge and hard equity i think it's more directed at investors 
um, that need short-term solutions, uh, take care of oppor opportunities that might show up. Um, it's, it's not designed for primary home buyers. Um, it's not designed for second home buyers. It's designed for somebody that's looking at investment uh, property. Uh, we do land loans within there as well. We could do construction loans for individuals that are gonna buy a spec home, um, you know, build a spec home. Um, we're seeing that a lot. We're seeing a lot of that trend. A lot of investors are looking to uh, turn ugly homes into new homes and kind of uh, add inventory to this low supply environment that we're in. So I'm seeing that kind of transaction, land loans, construction loans, um, closing, you know, trying to save a deal that couldn't close earlier. So um, that's the, the bridge loan market. In reference to non-QM, Pam, uh, going back to that, um, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, people realize that, you know, we used to have a subprime market, right, that kind of crashed in 2009. And people thought, well, we were crazy doing 100% financing. Um, so what is the difference right now between non-QM and subprime and what makes it a little bit safer for the overall market? Because I know that there's going to be concerns about, are we creating now products that uh, are going to be too difficult to- Are unlock? setting us up for failure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, big differences. I mean, the non-QM area is really to support a buyer that doesn't have a 580 score or anything like that, which is what they used to be in the past. It was really that bad credit BC lending. That's not what it's about. It's about someone that may have had, let's say a short sale or foreclosure um, that have come back in, in terms of income and where they're at now. Um, if you look at a jumbo loan, you could not get a loan for seven years after having something like that happen to you. Non-QM comes in and says, hey, if you uh, recuperated yourself, you're, you're, you had the situation happen. It, a lot of people did this because it just made financial sense to let the property go. Um, it was an investment property. It wasn't their primary. It wasn't their main concern. So because of what was happening, they had no choice. But that doesn't mean that they now are not where they need to be and they're able to give let's say a 20 percent down on a property because of what happened and pay a higher rate um, their credit score has has recuperated all of that their recent pay history is what's looked at are you paying your bills on time are your credit limits you know are you running them up to the limit your balances are up to the limit all of that is looked at so that plays into the credit score so there's, that's one of the biggest differences between what it was in the past and what it is now. Um, the other thing is that it's, it's a product that's also built for the need on the property itself, which is something that we didn't have in the past as well. The property that is offering a short-term rental opportunity is something that we could not do. A uh, property that's a condo hotel, we, we would never do that here. Um, we have those opportunities now. We have financing options for those properties now. Um, so, but the biggest difference is the fact that this is not a loan for a person that has a 580 credit score. Great. That's Thank not you. what we're doing. And they require a larger down payment, which Come is on. a safer bet. So more succinct. Thank you. I appreciate that. Guys, um, we're going to open discussion. Um, Jordan, I don't know if you've seen any questions that have come in that we need to, to address now at this point. Uh, basically, we've been kind of answering them discussion-wise uh, as, as they were coming in. But, um, but Pam, a question for you, because I know uh, we've been asked this in the past, um, to finance a pre-construction uh, for a project like 160 that will be complete in, in about 11 months or 10 months, um, that wouldn't, would, that would fall under one of the categories of the, the loans that you were mentioning? Yes, we would be able to do something either in a jumbo loan, non-conforming, conventional, it is still conventional. If the, if the client can provide income documentation and the project is approved as far as, you know, the, you have to go through 
the approval process of getting the, the project approved, you can go with a conforming product. Um, I'm sorry, non-conforming conventional product, which would give them the best rate, 30 year fixed. The next tier where this project will fall under, which would be the majority, would fall under the non-QM, where you have a non-warrantable option and the rate is depending on what option the client chooses to go with. A, a lot of buyers are self-employed, do not report enough income on their tax returns because they're self-employed. There's a lot of deductions taken. That client would not have to provide their tax return as a, as a source of their income. They could provide bank statements. There's a lot of different flexibilities offered in that, in that tier. So for most of your clients would probably fall under the non-QM. And we can always look at them, sit with them and do a pre-approval at this point, even if it's 10 months, 11 months away, and review the assets, which is the biggest, the most important part of a non-QM loan is the assets. Because remember, we're not providing income documentation traditionally as it's required. So you're gonna have reserve requirements on the asset side of it. You're gonna have that money have to be seasoned. If there's any kind of transfers done, wire transfers, large transfers into an account, all of that should be reviewed with time so that it's done correctly, so that we're able to let the borrower know, this is the way that we need to document this and this is what's required. And I think it's great that, that we're 10 months away so that that is done correctly. Because obviously they're gonna be sending deposits and putting their money in escrow. We have to make sure that that's done the right way. Terrific. Thank you, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Jordan, thank you. I think I'm done here. Here's yeah. our contact information, guys. And uh, I'm going to stop the share now and go back to Jordan. Yeah, guys, I just want to thank everyone for, for attending the webinar. George and Pam, thank you so much. It was a true pleasure uh, to hear about not only financing options, but where we all think this market is heading. Um, so I really appreciate your time. For all those attending, you will be getting an email. It'll have our contact information on it. If you're interested in financing options, definitely contact Pam and George. Advaster Capital. Uh, if you're interested in a unit at 160 Marina Bay, call us here at the sales gallery, which is 954-939-0440. You can check out our website at 160marinabay.com. We'll also be posting this webinar on our YouTube and Instagram channel uh, at 160 Marina Bay. If you want to rewatch it, uh, figure out any, any things that we showed on the slideshow, please rewatch it and contact us with any interest. And with that being said, uh, George and Pam, thank you so much again. And thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for everyone. Have a great day. Have a terrific day.